Um, hello everyone, I'm Ana Pellicer Sanchez. I'm a lecturer in the School of English and in the Center for Research in Applied Linguistics. And in this video, I want to tell you a bit about the type of research that we do here in Applied Linguistics. Uh, I know that in a three minute video, it really is impossible to talk about all the many different lines of research that we follow in the Center for Research in Applied Linguistics. But I hope that after having seen this video, you get a general idea of the kind of research that we conduct here, the kind of uh, projects that we work in, and also the type of training that we provide our postgraduate students with. Um, the teaching and research interests of academics and researchers in the Center for Research in Applied Linguistics cover a wide range of topics in the field, including things like uh, different aspects of uh, language learning and language acquisition, language communication and language use. So these would be kind of the broad topics, uh, but obviously there are many different specialisms within the centre uh, covering disciplines like corpus linguistics and discourse studies, communication in different contexts like professional communication or health communication, intercultural communication, um, disciplines of language learning and teaching, bilingualism, language processing, uh, literary linguistics and many others. Uh, so our undergraduate students start to be trained in these thesis in these topics from a, obviously from a much more general perspective in modules like language and context or investigating English language and um, discourse analysis, social linguistics, uh, etc. And it is at the postgraduate level, at the master level, that they start getting a much more specialized training in modules like second language acquisition, vocabulary language and learning, psycholinguistics, intercultural communication, health communication, and many others. Uh, so there is no doubt that here in Nottingham, the School of English, we provide our students with the possibility of getting a comprehensive understanding of the field of applied linguistics and also with the opportunity, especially for our postgraduate uh, students, to conduct research in, in these many different areas. But why Nottingham? Why to study applied linguistics in, in Nottingham? Well, if I had to give one main reason, one only reason why um, students who come here and study applied linguistics with us is because of the possibility of interdisciplinary training. Uh, so here in the Center for Research in Applied Linguistics, we have many different research groups and reading groups, uh, like the Bilingualism Research Group or the Corpus Linguistics Reading Group, the Little Linguistics Studio or the uh, Vocabulary Research Group. And we provide our postgraduate research students the possibility of taking part in these groups and uh, it, it to, in order to expand their knowledge, expand their training in ways that it wouldn't be possible many other places. Um, and a very clear example of the type of interdisciplinary training that we offer uh, to our postgraduate students uh, can be seen in the type of experiments, the type of uh, research that we conduct in our psycholinguistics lab. Uh, so now I would like you to come with me to the psycholinguistics lab and I'll show you a couple of examples of uh, experiments and research studies that we conduct there so that you can see the type of experimental techniques that we use to investigate different topics in applied linguistics and in English language learning and English language teaching. So let's go to the lab. Okay, so welcome to our psycholinguistics lab. As I said earlier, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of experiments that we conduct here uh, to investigate issues of language processing, language acquisition and language learning. Um, so we know that having knowledge about a second or foreign language is important, but it's also important to be able to access that knowledge, vocabulary or grammar, in a quick, in an automatic way. So here in the lab, we um, conduct different experiments to uh, investigate how people access this knowledge, the speed of response, the speed of access uh, to that knowledge. So as an example, we have here uh, Hilde, one of our PhD students. She's uh, doing a lexical decision task. In these type of tasks, we measure participants' the speed of response, the speed of access to the vocabulary knowledge. Uh, so in this case, we present individual words, uh, real words and invented words in the middle of the screen. And as you can see, what Hilda is doing, um, she's just pressing two buttons that she has in front of her in, a bo in this bottom box. And she's saying yes or no whether she uh, thinks the words presented are real words or not. 
So with this type of reaction time equipment, what we do is to get two very important types of information. So we get the um, accuracy information, whether her responses are accurate, and we also get the reaction time information. So how many milliseconds it takes Hilda to make a response to access that vocabulary knowledge that uh, she has in English as a second language. So this is the first uh, piece of equipment that I wanted to show you. And now let's move to the second one. Okay, so this is the second equipment that I wanted to show you today. This is the eye tracker. For those of you who are not familiar with this, um, this piece of equipment basically records eye movements, participants' eye movements, while completing different tasks on the computer screen. <coughs> so in this case, we have Hilda here, who is uh, completing a reading task. Okay, so uh, we have a reading text in the screen, and the only thing she has to do is to read that text, while her eye movements are recorded. So the advantage of this equipment is that we get really accurate information about where exactly in the screen, in the, screen the particular area that the participant is fixating while reading, or uh, how many milliseconds are spent reading each word in the text, or information like how many times uh, the reader is going back to read different parts in the text while reading. So we can get very accurate information about what's going on while learners are reading a text. So the information here is sent here, you can really see that, but here we get um, the participant's eye movement, so we get exactly uh, the movement of the pupil while, uh, in this case, Hilda is reading uh, the text. So we use, here in this case, we are uh, showing a longer text, a multi-line text, but all the times we just show images or videos, movies or sorted text. So there is a wide range of projects and studies and experiments that we can do uh, with the eye tracking. And so this is one of, in this case, this uh, particular project uh, is trying to investigate second language learners of English uh, reading behavior. Uh, so what happens when they're reading a text and they find words they don't know? So do learners go back to reread the word again? How many times is the new word read? Or maybe is the new word um, just skipped while reading? This is the kind of things that we can investigate with eye tracking. So um, as you can see, these projects bring together the fields of applied linguistics, psycholinguistics, all the times even corpus linguistics and all the disciplines. So I wanted to show you these couple of examples because they're a good example of the type of interdisciplinary training that we provide our students. So our students start to get familiarized with this equipment uh, at the undergraduate level in which uh, for one of the modules we offer they have to come here to the lab, they have to take part in different experiments and they have to, um, so from the perspective of the participants, they get to know how these different pieces of equipment work. And then it is at the uh, postgraduate level in which they get the chance to design their own studies and collect their own data. So, uh, so this is the kind of projects that we conduct here in the Center for Research of Applied Linguistics. Some of them, obviously, and not all of them. So taking advantage of these, uh, the, all the equipment, all the resources we have, the different research groups, the different reading groups, as I was mentioning earlier, um, the students uh, can get this kind of interdisciplinary training that I was mentioning uh, before. And they can do so in a very supportive and excellent research environment.